everybody, something a bit different today. So if you know me and you know my channel, you'll know that I love Chanel and Dior and I usually review all of their releases. And I just thought the other day, do I even have a favourite? Do I even know? I just don't honestly know. And maybe I don't even want a favourite, but I was just so curious to see how their products play against each other. So what I'm going to do today is a full face of Chanel on one side and Dior on the other. And I've got a huge tray here in front of me of all the different products I'm going to try up against each other. And the Chanel side is £587 worth of products and the Dior side is £379 worth of products. So the Chanel is a little bit more pricey. I'm pointing, I haven't put it on yet. <laughs> anyway, I'm really looking forward to trying this. I've been really excited since I decided to make this video. I love these two brands and I'm just dying to see them up against each other, to be honest. So I really, really do hope you'll enjoy this video. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm 47, not a professional, just somebody who loves makeup and beauty. And here on my channel, I like to review products, show you some of my favorite products and looks, and give you any beauty news I think you might be interested in. If you think you'd enjoy that, please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so very, very much for returning to my channel. All of you mean the world to me, you really do. And I would love to chat with you below in the comments section. I, I really do love getting to know everybody. And if you don't know about my skin, if that's helpful when I'm trying all of these on, I've got fair to light skin with neutral, with slightly cool undertones, mostly neutral, combination skin, but I mostly have dry skin with a very slightly oily t-zone. Anyway, that's enough information about me. Let's get on with this video. Also, if you're not new to this channel, you'll probably notice the slight change in the background. I recently filmed in my summer room, which was just brighter, and it's been bugging me for quite a while that the brightness in my beauty room is a bit taken away by my background being a bit dark, even though I light it up. So I've actually turned my desk around. So the background you saw before is now in front of me and the wall behind is now more visible, which is obviously much more of a light background. So hoping you enjoy the new background and hopefully it is a little bit more bright and not so, so dark as before, which none of you complained about, but it was bugging me a little bit. So I've also just noticed I've got a fly buzzing around in here. So, and I've also got the dogs in here with me. So sorry if you see a fly and the dogs make a noise. We've got some gardening going on out the front and the dogs are a bit worried. So I've had to bring them in with me anyway. Let's get on with the video. So I'm going to start with two primers and this one is from Chanel. This is the Le Beige Healthy Winter one if you saw this when it was released last winter. This is the Glow Primer in the shade Frosty White and this is £48. And on the other side I'll be using the Dior which is slightly more new. This is the Forever Glow Star Filter and I've got this in shade 0. And this one is £45 so only a £3 difference between these two. Sorry this fly is driving me bonkers. I will try and get rid of it if I can but it's keeps going in front of the camera I don't know if you can see it so I'll start with a bit of the Chanel this has the lovely classic Chanel smell it's a very light refreshing primer but I'm gonna be honest with you I don't really use glowy primers I don't really see the benefit of them because I find using a moisturizer pretty much does the same job for me if I want that bit of glow underneath, I can just use a lot of moisture. This is giving me moisture, but it's a very expensive way of doing it. So in all honesty, this isn't one I would recommend. Here is the Dior Forever Glow. So the star filter in shade zero. So you can see this one, even though it's shade zero, it does have a bit of pigment in it. But once it's rubbed into my skin, it pretty much disappears. I've put too much on really there because that one pump is enough for the whole face and I'm doing half a face so that's my mistake. So there is the Dior side, definitely more glowy and there is the Chanel side. So neither of these hide any texture, if anything they emphasise it but obviously it's going underneath so you can use powders and things to sort that one out but as I said you could get, I think you can use moisturisers for this purpose. I just personally don't see the benefit of these glowy primers I really don't I I sometimes like to use them underneath things like powder foundations but honestly if you want this effect I would just go for a good you can get lots of glowy moisturizers for a quarter of the price with much larger quantities but anyway if I was going to pick one of the two I probably go with the Dior for the glow but I would go with Chanel for the way it feels cooling and moisturizing so I'd actually call this one a draw because I don't really care either way but they're both quite good, so one all. 
So now moving on to foundations. So from Chanel, I've got the Sublimage Lessons de Teintes, de Teintes, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say that, I do apologise. The Ultimate Radiance Generating Serum Foundation. I've got this in the shade BD01. This was £135. But I can say with that whopping price, it does come with quite a good foundation brush, which I will actually use today. Then from Dior, I've got the Forever Skin Glow, the Clean Radiant Foundation and this is in shade 0N, but this was only 50. So we've got 135 versus 50 here. Starting with Chanel, I'm going to put two pumps into the palm of my hand. You can see this is quite a runny substance. Now I'm going to warm it up a bit with the brush they provide and start applying. Now these shades are pretty much winter shades for me. So with my tan, they do look a bit pale on me at the moment. So this one has a very strong fragrance, typical Chanel fragrance, sort of perfume scent, which is actually beautiful. It's not giving much in the way of coverage. It's a very light coverage, but it is a beautiful coverage. It's very pleasant to apply. It feels very cooling, very moisturizing. And you can see it's just taking the redness off my forehead there pretty much straight away. So it's canceling out the redness and giving me a light coverage, which is very natural and very beautiful actually. Moving on to the Dior, this is a bit less runny, not a huge difference. I'll be using my Refa B04 brush for this one. And this one straight away has more coverage. Can you see the difference immediately? So the Chanel is lighter. Quite a big difference in coverage actually. And this also has the classic Dior sort of perfumed fragrance. Cancels out all the redness on my nose completely and on my forehead. I think I probably had a little bit too much on the brush, so I'm going to go in with a sponge just to collect a little bit of that. This is the Chanel side, very glowy, but then I do have that glowy base as well, but it is a very radiant finish. And here is the Dior, and obviously this is the Forever Glow, so we're expecting a glow, and I've also used the Glow Primer, so I'm very glowy. A bit more coverage definitely on the Dior side. I'd say the Chanel is more of a refreshing light formula, definitely more lightweight, so I'd say this is the more comfortable of the two. Dior is still very comfortable though, there's not much in it, and it just gives a bit more coverage, and if I had to pick one, it would be the Dior but it's a fine line. It's what I'm looking for on the day really, but I think they're both beautiful finishes. What do you think? But I'm going to give this one to Dior. So next on to concealer. So for Chanel, I've got the Sublimage. This is in shade 10 and this was 85 pounds. And the Dior Forever Skin Correct in shade 1N, which is 34. So a huge price gap between these two. Again, with the Chanel, it does come with this brush, but I do find that it's a little bit too soft for me to really use. It's, it's quite good, but I don't really like it. So I will use the same brush for both sides. I actually have the same shape brush anyway. Not I'm not using the exact same one. So I don't want to contaminate them. So here is the Sublimage. If you don't already know this, this comes in a pot, which is a bit messy to use. So here's the pot. And I'm using the Rare Beauty Concealer Brush for this, which is a lovely shape. I'm going to put a dot there and there, and then on the eye itself, eyelid. So fragranced, exactly the same way as the foundation, but not quite as strong. This is very, very hydrating, very complementary to mature skin doesn't emphasize texture, doesn't settle into fine lines, very lightweight, very refreshing as you apply it. Very, very pleasant concealer, which I'd expect it to be for that price. So the Dior comes with a nice doe foot, which I much prefer to be honest, much easier for the application. I'm gonna put this in exactly the same spots. And I've got a brush that is actually a pretty much a dupe for that Rare Beauty one. This is the Philly Millie 811, much cheaper as well and as good. This brush is incredible. I love these brush shapes. These are all linked below for you if you wanted to get any of these. But this brush, I've got a feeling it's no more than about £10. But it's, just look at the shape of it. It is amazing. It's exactly the same as the Rare Beauty. So this concealer is a little bit less moisturizing, but it does give me a little bit more coverage, a bit like the foundation that we found with comparing Dior and Chanel there. So 
This one is a bit thicker, not quite as lightweight, but also it just blends into my skin like a really nice moisturizer, even though it's thicker and it's not emphasizing any lines or texture. It really sits beautifully. My skin absorbs it very nicely. So there are the two sides, Chanel and Dior. I slightly prefer the Dior because I feel it's given me that little bit more coverage but with the same sort of finish that's very complementary to mature skin. I know these wear well as well. So again, it's very close but I'm going to give this one to Dior. Now on to setting powders. So from Chanel, I've got the Powder Poudre, I'm sorry, Universal Libra. I hate having to pronounce these and getting it wrong so I am sorry. So this one is £50 and the one from Dior that I love the most anyway, this is the one I really do enjoy. This is the Forever Cushion Powder, the Blooming Boudoir Limited Edition. And this one is 54, so it's four pounds more, but it is coming in this fancy, beautiful case. I, I love this. It's my probably my favorite release from Dior when it comes to patterns. I love anything floral. And also this has a lavender shade to it, whereas the Chanel is white or translucent. But a massive difference here is you're getting 10 grams of powder in the Dior and you're getting 30 in the Chanel. So it's almost three times the price the Dior if you think about it in quantity terms. So the Chanel comes with a puff which I won't be using for under the eye and it's just one of these very standard tip out shakers. Pop a little bit in the lid and I'm using my Rare Beauty puff for this. I'll use the same puff for both sides and I'll just change ends. Now this is a powder I only actually bought for this video because I didn't have a Chanel setting powder. I love the Dior one, it's one of my favourites. So this is actually new to me. So I've been trying it out a little bit over the last week. And I have to say, this gave me one of the softest finishes when I use it all over the face. I kept touching my face all through the day because I couldn't believe how soft and smooth my skin felt. So I don't know why I haven't got this before. I don't know, even know how long it's been around. I know it's not new, but I think it is absolutely beautiful. It blurs, it, it, honestly, if you just, you've just got to feel it. Your skin feels the softest you'll ever, ever feel it after applying this powder. And it's not emphasizing any lines here. This is my trouble zone there. And it's looking absolutely fine. We set everything down nicely. So you can use this under eyes and the rest of the face. So for the Dior, I'll take the other side of the puff and I just tap this into the netting here. The only thing I would say with <coughs> this is what's happening to me now is I do need to puff quite a few times to get the amount I want and it all spreads the powder into the room and then I have to try not to inhale it. So that's the only thing about this I don't like. But this has a beautiful scent, really beautiful and it has a lovely finish and it looks great underneath eyes. It's quite brightening. So this is another one that works really, really well under eyes and the rest of the face. No caking, no settling into fine lines. It blurs, it's beautiful. In fact, I love this so much, I've got a backup. But even though I love this so much and I've got a backup, now that I've tested this one from Chanel and I felt the softness of it on my skin, I, sw I swear eight hours after application, I was still feeling my skin last time I dried this. I'm not getting that with the Dior. So on that basis alone, I'm going, and because you get so much for the, for the same price, I'm going to give this one to Chanel. So for bronzers, I'm going to use this one from Chanel. This is from their Le Beige Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powder Set, and this is in light coral. Now this costs 75 pounds, but to try and be fair with the prices being equal, if you get a single bronzer from Chanel, it's 50 pounds. And this one from Dior, which is a close match in shade to the bronze in this, which is why I'm comparing them, this was 53. This is the Dior Forever Natural Bronze Glow, the limited edition. And this one is in pink glow. So the difference here is Dior costs three pounds more. So I'm going to start with the Chanel. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of powder what's left on the puff because I'm not going in with any creams today, which I would normally be doing. So I'm just gonna set it a bit so that the powders work better. So I'm using my Chica Hodo, I think it is. Yeah, powder brush, which I love lately for bronzer. So this is quite a warm bronze for me, very much a summer bronze, but a very lovely, easy to use bronze that doesn't apply in a patchy way, lasts all day and is absolutely gorgeous. I really have been enjoying this face palette a lot. 
And using my Rafa 15 Mini, I'm also going to take some of this into the eye area because today I will be using single shadows from each of the Chanel and Dior releases across all of the lid. And I want to have a little bit of the bronzer here in my crease and out of it. And doing this gives a nice cohesive effect as it's matching here with the bronzer. Rafa 15 Mini here has become one of my most used brushes this year. It is absolutely perfect for this area and for giving more detail on the lid. It really is one of my favourites. And using Rafa number three, taking this underneath as well. So now going into the one from Dior, and this is their limited edition, so it came with their rather fancy packaging. And this is one I haven't honestly returned to very much. I was just looking for a shade match really between the two brands. So this one looked like the best sort of match when I was swatching them. So it's not that I don't like this one. It's a very nice summer bronzer. There's just been so many bronzers released that I just forget to go back and use them. You can see straight away that, oops, I've gone a bit mad there. But overall, I think the pigment is a little bit less. There's quite a glow in this one. Actually, I think the pigment's about the same, to be fair. You can see they are very similar, aren't they? Just cleaned off the Rafa Mini. I'm going to avoid the pink now when I take this in the eyes. Not that I think it really shows up when you use it as a bronzer, in all honesty. Anyway, I'm going to now just do exactly the same on this side. So, out of the two of these, I think the Dior one is just giving me a little bit, maybe too much of a glow. I think that it's more of a natural glow on the Chanel side. And simply based on the fact that I've been using this so much and I've forgotten to return to this, I'm definitely going to give the points here to Chanel. So now moving on to blush and finding two that look very similar. These were actually released last autumn, so they are very autumnal in shade. This one from Chanel is the Le Beige Healthy Winter Glow Blush in Mauve Glacé. And this was £54. It's actually sold out now, I'm afraid. And this one from Dior, it was called Rosy Glow. This was 35, so quite a bit cheaper. And this is in the shade 012 Rosewood. Both say they give a glow. So there is a price difference, but you get nine grams with the Chanel and you only get six with the Dior. So it does sort of balance that out a little bit, but at the same time, you are having to pay more for the Chanel. I'm going to use my Chica Hodo cheek brush take this Chanel shade. Now notoriously Chanel blushes don't show up too much so you can usually go in quite liberally without panicking even though this is quite a deep shade which I quite like about the Chanel blushes. I like that they're buildable. I know not everyone does but I really do. Now this is a beautiful autumn shade, it really is. I haven't used it since last autumn so I'm remembering just how lovely this is actually. Yeah, look at that colour. It's beautiful, isn't it? I want the application to be the same, so I'm using the same brush. So I've got one of these brush cleaners here. It looks terribly messy, but it's stained. So just so you know, that's how I'm doing this. I'm just cleaning the brushes off in between so that I'm using the same brush. So now going into this one from Dior. I can't remember the pigment on this, but again, Dior, like Chanel, doesn't tend to be very pigmented, but oh wow, that is quite pigmented. I've got way too much there, look weird isn't it it's a year ago that I reviewed these so I've forgotten all about them I'm just taking it down here with a buffer pro because I do not want that much blush up there but for Dior I'd say this is actually pretty pigmented and it's definitely got much more of a glow but it's a beautiful colour I love it but it does show my texture off a little bit more than the Chanel so here are the two of them they are very close in shade, aren't they? But they've definitely got more of a glow here on the Dior side. I do love the shade of these. So I do love that glow. If I wasn't going to add a highlighter, then I probably prefer the Dior. But if I'm going to add a highlighter, which I will be today, I prefer the Chanel. So for that reason, I think they just have different uses. I think they're both gorgeous, actually. So I'm going to make this one a draw. What do you think? So now moving on to highlighters and this is my actual favourite one from Chanel and I've picked my favourite from Dior so I'm not being mean there. So this is the absolutely beautiful Camellia, the Le Symbol de Chanel and this was released last year, this massive beautiful one. I've used this a lot but look how much the embossing is still there and this one is in the shade Pearly White. And this is £68, but you do get a whopping 14 grams in here. So 
it's quite a lot but it does give you enough highlighter to last you for the rest of your life and my favorite from Dior is this one I'll only be using the sort of pearly white match today I love the pink and the gold in this one I don't really use this deep one here so much but this one is lovely on the eyes so this one is 001 Universal. This is their Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. There's 10 grams in here. And this one is 43, so a bit less, but then you're not getting the 14 grams. So nearly 50% extra in the Chanel. So price-wise, I'm paying more for the Chanel. But I do think it's much more value for your money with Dior because you will never need to use this much and you get four shades with the Dior. So I do think it is better value, definitely. But let's compare them side by side. Got my Chica Hodo highlight brush. Look at that. Just look at that. I adore this highlighter. Every time I use it, it impresses me. It's absolutely stunning. You do get quite a lot of shine and it does leave you with a little bit of sparkle on your face. So you do need to like that. I think this is stunning. I don't think it emphasizes texture though. It is giving me a sparkle that really lights up. I am underneath studio lights, but I think this is gorgeous. I really do. I don't think this highlighter can be beaten. So Dior might have a problem when I try it against it. I've put it a bit too close to my eye now. But anyway, beautiful. And I think I'll put a tiny touch of this one on the chin and above the Cupid's bow. And I'll use Dior down the nose, just to be fair. So I'll just clean that brush off. So this white shade in the Dior palette is called Strobe White. Here is how this one looks. This one's a lot more of a fine, smooth finish without the sparkle. So it really depends which you prefer because you do get a lot of... I just love that Chanel one. I love it. This one I love too. I really do. It is gorgeous. Probably, I think, I would imagine people watching will prefer the Dior because it gives more of a smooth finish. But this one is just so pretty. I do love a sparkle. So it really depends. Really hard to call a winner here, you know. Based on value for money, I would give it to Dior, but because I know how much I adore this and how much it makes me happy the minute it heats hits my cheeks, and look how beautiful it is. This one is the winner today. So this year, Chanel and Dior have had a fabulous release of single shadows, and I've got one of the new ones here from Chanel, and actually one of the older ones from Dior because they're a good match. So from Chanel, this is the 238 Brun Talpa, and this is a satin, and it's £36. And from Dior, I've got the 658 Beige Mitzer. This is a metallic, so there is a slight difference. So one's satin, one's metallic. This one is £32, so £4 cheaper. And you get 1.9 grams with Chanel and 2 with Dior. So Dior is cheaper, and you get a tiny bit more, just 0.1 of a gram. So I'm going to actually use my finger to apply both of these. So I'm going to start with the Bruntalpa from Chanel. And just run this all over the lid. Nice simple look today. So I've got that bronze already in the corner. This is a very, very sort of universally flattering shade. And it's so silky soft and so easy to apply. That's it, it's done. How quick and easy and beautiful is that? I love it. Using the wrapper number three, I'm taking a little bit and I'm gonna run it underneath. And now beige mitzer from Dior on this side. So this one is a metallic, so it's gonna have a much shinier finish. But I just wanted to match the shades. So this one applies just as easily, just with my finger, that's all I'm having to do. And this one is stunning, isn't it? What a beautiful, beautiful finish. And using the O3 from Refer again, running it underneath. And then just use the 15 Mini from Refer again to just blend it into the crease. Not that it really needs it, because it pretty much did it for me. And wipe the brush off and do it on the other side. And using my BK Beauty 207, I'm going to go back into this highlighter from Chanel to put a pop of brightness here in the inner corner. Look how beautiful that highlighter is in the inner corner. And bring a little bit here. In fact, because this one's metallic, I'm slightly tempted to run a bit of this across the whole of the lid just to give it a bit of shine. Showing how this highlighter can be used in other ways really. It's just giving that pop of shimmer across the top of this satin Bruntalpa. 
and then using the same brush with the highlight taking it under the brow and cleaning the brush off going into that Dior highlight and doing exactly the same in the inner corner there definitely not showing up as well as that Chanel is it but it's still lovely and under the brow as well I won't be running this one over the eyelid obviously because it's already got a nice shiny metallic finish so based on this look I would call the winner definitely Dior because this is an absolutely stunning shade but I'm not going to call it the winner because this is not a new shade and there have been new shades like Bronze Helper from Chanel and there's been new shades from Dior but the only standout new shades this year from me have actually been the ones from Chanel so this one is Jade Facet and this one is Bleu d'Or Antique this is a metallic and this one is also a metallic. Here is Jade Facet, which has been probably my favourite single eyeshadow of the year so far. And this one is the, I don't know if it's, look at it, it's gorgeous. This one is the, is it Blay rather than Blur? Blay Door Antique. They are just gorgeous, aren't they? So Chanel is winning this year for me on single eyeshadows, but because this was already in the locker for Dior, I'm going to call this a draw because this is really gorgeous, isn't it? So I've gone off camera and put a bit of liner and mascara on, so that is both of the eye looks now. Beige Mitzer is something special, isn't it? But don't think the Chanel isn't too, because it really is, especially those new green shades I showed you. So anyway, lastly now, moving on to lips, wrong side. So very hard to show you favourites or which ones are the same. And these aren't actually the same. I just tried to find ones that were roughly the same. So from, I'm just going to use glosses because I love their glosses, both of them, especially the Dior one. So these are going to be a slightly odd match. But starting with Chanel, this one is the Chanel Rouge Cocoa Gloss. I've got this in the shade Magnolia. This is £36, shade number 96. So it's got a really nice doe fit on it. So I'm going to try and just do one half here. Here that is on the back of my hand. Obviously being a gloss, not very pigmented, but we're not really looking for pigment. And then here this one is from Dior. This one is 33, so it's three pounds less. And this one is in the shade 056. I don't actually have the name of this one. So this has that immediate sort of minty smell because it's the plumping gloss. So this one isn't a plumping gloss. So it's not the best comparison, is it? But So there is the one from Dior. And they, they do look the same on the lips actually, so it's not a problem because they're so, there's not much pigment in either. So I do actually think looking at this that I prefer the look of the Chanel, but I know the ones I reach for all the time and want to buy so many shades in is the, the Dior because it is such a beautiful formula and there's so many other colours I prefer than this. I was just trying to match up colours for this video and I don't feel tempted to buy, collect or increase my colour shade in the Chanel even though it's lovely. It's just, it's not that I don't like it and I don't recommend it. It is really nice. It is very thick. In fact, it feels a bit thicker than Dior. And we know that Dior's got that lovely grippy thickness but I'd say that the Chanel is slightly better from that point of view. So I think now feeding them together, you probably get a bit more longevity out of the Chanel than you would the Dior. If you've tried a lot of the Chanel, please let me know. Because like I said, I'm just not tempted to get them. I actually bought this for the purpose of review in this video. So I have to give this to Dior because I just, I love the feel of it. I love that fresh minty sort of feeling I'm getting straight away from that, which is giving me a slight bit of plumping, which is not that obvious. In fact, I almost think that the Chanel side looks a bit more plumped, but so if it was strictly between these two right now, I'd pick Chanel, but because I know I've got a much bigger collection of Dior and I love so many of them, some of them with much richer pigments, I definitely have to give this one to Dior. What do you think? So that is my full face of Chanel and Dior. Do you have a favourite side? I've just tallied up my points for both sides and no surprise here, we have six points for Chanel and six points for Dior, so it's a draw. I'm actually quite pleased. I would have been upset, I think, if one had won over the other because I know if you had asked me prior to this, it's just I love them both. There's always winners in certain releases, which I prefer, as you've seen in this video, but I love these brands. I adore them. I really do. And this has been such a pleasure and I'm really glad there wasn't a winner, but I hope this has showed you how 
brilliant these brands are and how some of them have differences in certain categories so some might be strong one would be stronger in one category maybe than the other but they have very similar strengths in many categories i'd love to hear from you what your preferences are maybe not over the brand but do you have a preference in say blush bronzer lip products eyes do you have one that you know that you prefer much more in not just the ones i've tried on today maybe you have three dior foundations you love more than any of the chanel so it's an outright one I'd love to hear from you what you think about all of that because that really does fascinate me. So anyway, this has been a little bit different and I've loved, loved doing this as you can probably tell and I hope you've enjoyed it too. I'd love it if you commented below and engaged and chatted because I really do enjoy that and if you're not already liked and subscribed, please, please do so and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video and if you're already subscribed, as I said at the start, I appreciate every single one of you. I really, really do and I hope to see all of you for my next video. Take care everybody. Bye.